Final nine minutes, boys. You guys got to gear up for this one. I'm here at the Fairfield University Recplex for what is an extraordinary day. Today is the first annual dodgeball, kickball, and a tad bit of basketball jamboree. And today is really all about the athletes. I'm, sp I'm speechless. This, this couldn't be any more of a better day. Over 50 special athletes and Fairfield University athletes came together for a day filled with fun, food, and friends. This is an awesome, awesome event. We're so excited that it's finally here, and we're so happy that everyone's here and excited and ready to play some dodgeball and kickball. The unique idea to come up with a non-competitive day was created by junior softball player Emily Orr. Orr worked with special athletes this summer and couldn't pass up the opportunity to build a new community. We wanted to do an event that we would get the uh, Fairfield athletes involved with the Special Olympics so we can kind of build a community between both uh, spectrums. So um, we thought that this would be a fun way to get everybody involved and have a great time. It's a, it's a blast. I, I, like, I knew it was going to be fun, but I really, I didn't know, uh, I didn't know it was going to be to this level. I, uh, I didn't know I was going to be a referee either. The students and athletes weren't the only ones having a blast. Fairfield math professor Joe Denon's son David is a Special Olympian. I have a son who participates. And he's 35 now, he's been doing it for years, loves it both athletically and even more importantly socially. The day provided a rare opportunity for athletes and students alike to leave their stresses behind and just play some ball. Hey, come here to this great campus. Uh, almost makes you wish I almost makes you wish I was going here. Although the 2012 MAC tournament ended in heartbreak for the Stags at the hands of the Loyola Greyhounds in the championship game, Fairfield still managed to have a chance to dance in the College Insiders Tournament, where they took on the Manhattan Jaspers. Alumni Hall in Fairfield, Connecticut was the setting for the rubber match of the season series between MAC foes Fairfield and Manhattan. The Jaspers defeated Fairfield on their home court in Riverdale back in January, but the Stags returned the favor, beating Manhattan by seven at home in February. In this contest, the Stags dart off to an early 8-2 lead behind the play of senior Ryan Olander and sophomore Keith Matthews. Matthews had a career-high 15 points in this contest, but the Jaspers would not go down easy. After all, they got George Beeman, the max leading scorer, who paced the Jaspers with 16 points, and they only trailed Fairfield 38-37 at the half. Unfortunately for Beeman, the Stags were in complete control in the second half as the sophomore trio of Jamel Fields, Matthews, and Maurice Barrow combined for 41 points, and senior at Kim Sanders emphatically shut the door on the Jaspers' season as Fairfield won 69-57 and advanced to the CIT quarterfinal where they meet Robert Morris of the Northeastern Conference for a chance to win three postseason tournament games for the first time in school history. And here's what Keith Matthews had to say after the game. It feels good. I mean, not too many teams are playing right now. We just have to keep playing. And, I mean, at this, this time, it's all about playing hard, and that's what we came, came out and did, play hard. It was an incredible season for Stag sports fans, to say the least. Whether you followed the men's soccer team and their undefeated regular season, led by Kiwi goalkeeper Michael O'Keefe, or whether you followed the men's basketball team and their incredible run to the MAC championship game against Loyola without star point guard Derek Needham. Either way, it all surmounted in three MAC championships, two championship appearances, and one Commissioner's Cup. I'm in downtown Las Vegas, Nevada, also known as the entertainment capital of the world. But this week, it's the basketball capital of the world with the NBA Summer League. But more importantly, the Global Basketball Summer League held up at the Doolittle Community Center. Day two of the pro review at the Global Basketball Summer League brought some early morning drama between the Las Vegas Heat and Spud Stars. The Stars raced out to an early 10-point halftime lead. But thanks to the crafty guard play of Brandon Hogg and the smooth shooting of Brandon Lavender, that lead was very, very short-lived. Coming into today's semifinal game, everybody knew that the Stags were going to have to play the game of their lives to upend the top seeded Iona Gales. The Stags did just that. After a season that saw many ups, including two 1,000 point scorers, a 15 and 3 conference record, and a MAC championship game appearance, it ultimately ended on a low here at Alumni Hall. Lavender, who led the Pac 12 in three point shooting last season, scored 17 of his 19 points in the second half, and Spud Star's superstar. Rickus McCrory was held to zero points in the final 24 minutes. Now the Las Vegas Heat prepare for their final matchup with Moneyball today. For Global Basketball, I'm John Tessitore. Hello and welcome to the Webster Bank Arena at Harbor Yard where the Fairfield Stags suffered an 80-72 loss against the Coach Cooley-led Providence Friars. The Stags did it all against a record-setting crowd of 6,375. The night did not start well for the Stags, who fell behind 19-6 after seven minutes of play and could not find a way to stop the three-headed attack of Vincent Council, Bryce Cotton, and Gerard Coleman. 
It's Championship Sunday here, and Point Streak is taking on scouting for you. And this first half wasn't even really much of a battle. A 38-point halftime lead for Point Streak. Yeah, and now we also have, look at this guy. We got Sidney Johnson here. <laughs> coach Sidney Johnson, the head coach of the 22-14 and 14 Fairfield Stags. And, Coach, great to have you here. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. Yeah, now, first of all, since we're on a college campus, I mean, how would you, how would you rate the season? What, what, kind of, what type of grade would you give this year's season? I think a B-plus is, is fair enough to give us. You know, I thought uh, we had some challenges in front of us. We overcame them. We had a slow start. We didn't win a MAC championship, uh, but we did get some wins and got in the postseason. So, you know, overall, B-plus, it's, it's pretty solid. Now, early on in the season, you guys were struggling a bit. You guys kind of got to a slow start off the gate. It looked like you were kind of trying to get a grasp of the team. When did you start to notice, um, you know, the type of personnel that you had? When did you really start to kind of connect with this team, especially in terms of the bench players? Yeah, that's a great question. Let's go, 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 go. Unappreciated, unknown, anything but unwilling. Gary Martin, a sophomore, finds himself on the men's basketball team after spending his entire freshman year as a team manager. Eventually, I don't always want to be an underdog. Martin grew up in Cleveland and attended a new high school that didn't have a varsity basketball team until he was a junior. He only played 25 varsity games in two seasons, yet he still was confident enough in his game to try to convince coach Ed Cooley to let him walk on. If I, if I believe I can do it, why can't I, you know? Ah! Job, Gary. Just so you know, Gary's got two of your three rebounds. Cooley gave Martin the opportunity to be a part of the team as a manager. He stayed persistent and without hesitation, accepted his new role. Coming from my situation, I understand like, Coach Cooley owes me nothing. So I just, you know, I just told him I wanted to walk on and then put the, you know, the rest is in my hands. Then in October, Martin made the team. Although excited, he was anything but satisfied. In fact, Martin's jersey does not even have his name printed on the back. He has his motto tattooed across his chest. I got it, um, the hunger for more tattooed across my chest just to, as a reminder, you know, that you, got, you have to stay hungry, you know, never be satisfied because, I mean, especially coming from where, you know, I come from uh, and a lot of people on the team come from, I mean, it's not always the best situation, so you got to stay hungry. Sitting the bench is not easy, especially when you go through the same demanding schedule as a scholarship player. Yet, it doesn't anger him. It reminds him of how far he has come. I have nothing to be angry about. Last year I was a manager. Last year I wasn't, you know, playing. I wasn't in the layup line. But right now you have to understand your role also. So right now is just helping, keeping the team morale up, keeping everybody ready to play. Gary Martin came into Fairfield with a desire and hunger for success. Whether he becomes a leading scorer or remains a bench player, one thing is for certain: he believes he will always stay hungry on and off the court. And what a game, and we will end it here. Fairfield wins 85-75. The one seed goes down for the second consecutive year, and the Stags for the second time in three years advance to the MAC Championship game. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow night at 7.